if you've clicked on this video because of the title, chances are you're in the middle of an awful writer's block. So this is a part, this is one of the six videos on writer's block I'm doing, but this is going to be writer's block triage because we're not talking about preventative medicine for writer's block right now. We're talking you are in, you are in the middle of the woods and you're lost. How the heck do you find your way out? Let's just say that you're someone who got pretty used to writing about half an hour each day and all of a sudden the creek became a dry creek bed. What do you do? This is triage we're talking about here. It is time that you change occupation. Whatever routine you had going before, for now you quit that and we're going to find you some new writing occupation. But before I go any further, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to keep yourself open for when creativity starts again. We always have good reasons to push away creative ideas. But as a writer, you just can't afford to do that. Creativity is fickle. It, we have almost no conscious control over when it's going to happen, how much golden information it's going to leave at your doorstep in the middle of the night, maybe. We just don't know. Going forward, don't forget, as soon as you get one stray idea, stop everything and go back and make sure that idea gets onto your audio recorder. These, pho these, t these days your phone is a built-in dictator, dictation machine. You can jot it down in a notebook. Don't stop carrying that notebook around with you to jot down ideas. Never give up the hunt. And I'm, this is an aside. This is not about how to cure a writer's block. This is always you always need to be on the hunt for when, when your creative side decides that it will give you some of that material we need to make our stories. You want to choose a new occupation. Occupation number one, you become a reporter. Let's just say that you're a fiction writer. You're not going to become a reporter out in the real world, though you could, if you if that's sounds like that would be a good mode to switch into, but you can become a reporter for your genre. This is just as an example. If you're interested in space operas, this is a good time to devote yourself to research each day and go out. And yes, there are great videos online. That's always an option, but also there are really good books out there. If you, if you go and find one book to research and you don't, you don't just read it, you start to take some notes and imagine yourself as the reporter. Now, what you're doing here is you're actually world building, but you're in a mode that circumvents writer's block. You're not trying to be creative here, brushes up on their science, or like, let's say you're a, you write about a different time. Get a book of history, read it, and this is essential. When you read it, just jot down some notes, whatever you find interesting. You're not necessarily taking notes for that next novel but you're, you're acting on what interests you. Sometimes when we get worked up about finishing a work of writing, we don't so much look into what interests us as much as to what we think was going to fit into the story, but it is our interest that leads us along, and it leads us into new discoveries. So take 
general notes. You're not taking notes for that next story. You're writing down little things that interest you. And these don't need to be thorough notes. It could just be a name. It could be the name of someone who lived back in the 1200s, a farmer who threw a rock at, at a, a castle or something. Just, it's interesting. Just jot a little note down and continue to do this practice every day. And keep a journal, and the journal can be in the vein of you being a reporter. And you're reporting to this imaginary audience who checks in with you each day and are given the news. And the news is what you find on your, you know, reporters that go, okay, I'll go down there and cover that story. You're going out and you're finding the stories and you're covering them. This is your new practice daily to replace the old one. These are all suggestions and you can choose how you like, what fits you, as long as you keep some kind of schedule, as long as you do some kind of writing each day. In the long run it helps greatly, even if it's just a couple of minutes, just it does help. Okay, idea, occupation number two. Volunteer to edit someone else's work. I know that when people read, it inspires them. And when you edit someone else's work, it is the act of writing. Your brain switches into that mode. It's, I think of it as like your built-in organic virtual reality, where your brain is using words and your imagination is creating the experiences that go along with those words. It's something the human brain does. And when you're involved in editing someone else's work, yes, you're consciously going through and looking at the structure of the sentences, but it helps that whole connection between words and virtual experience. When you're helping to edit someone else's work, you look at a sentence and you're thinking about, okay, you understand what that sentence says. And because you are doing that, you are in a virtual experience that that sentence is creating. And you want to think about a better way to structure that sentence so that the experience comes more readily, it's easier to read, Maybe there's something a little ambiguous, a little confusing about the sentence. You want to make sure that the sentence is saying exactly what the writer intends it to say. And while you are working that out, you, in your brain, you're having that connection between the inner virtual experiencer and those words the connection between those two brain processes is the connection that is writing. You are working toward whatever your final goals are as a writer. You are working toward them when you help someone else edit their work. And it's kind of like you're borrowing their inspiration. It won't, you're, you're not going to take their book, but it, it, it keeps you in the loop. It, it, it keeps the wheels spinning. It also makes it a lot more likely that you will catch that next wind of inspiration. We're trying to coax, a writer is like trying to coax the creative juices to flow. And one, one great way to do that is by editing someone else's work. I'm big on the practice I'm about to explain. You want to visualize the work already done. As an example, you want to write a 400-page novel about creatures that live in the center of the sun. The pen is put down, the computer is put away. This is just you imagining. I want you to imagine what book, if you just that, whatever project, I want you to imagine the end goal. Like, 
see it in your hands, think of it as already done. You can you can thumb through the pages, you can look at in the table of contents, you see it in front of you. By you doing this, you are creating that project. Again, you're coaxing your creativity. Next occupation, as a suggestion. Write fan fiction. Go out there and you have your favorite book, write some fan fiction around it. And then if you really like what you've written, you can always change it around enough so that it does become your genuine work. You can make the robots look different, change the names, switch the locations around. So yes, yeah, so if you're writing fact, fan fiction, chances are you're pretty close to writing the kind of material that you've been wanting to write anyway. Take the pressure off the work. Change your routine. Instead of sitting down to write 20 minutes each day, say, okay, before I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I need to work on a paragraph. So before breakfast, I need to work on a paragraph. It may take a couple of minutes, it may take 20 minutes, only one paragraph. And at first, only allow yourself that much work on that piece that you're working on. After a paragraph, put it aside so that you start, you, you, it, it helps, helps you go more lightly toward the work that needs to get done. Something to do instead of trying to write when you have writer's block. Next option, create your own role-playing game. This is, a, this is a great opportunity for you to research what are role-playing games? The most famous original D&D is it would be a great example to learn how this whole system works and relate it to fiction writing because it has exactly the same elements. And the interesting thing about a role-playing game is that you use rolling the dice to create that atmosphere of the odds and the bad things that can happen, the good things that can happen. And it gives you a chance to practice world building and also gets you away from this place where you're stuck when you're trying when you can't write that that fiction story you're working on. So you can start off creating a very simple role-playing game and it can be in any genre. You can create a role-playing game around romance, office politics, boxing, you name it. Uh, running a farm. You could create a role-playing game about running a farm and it's a great way to hone those skills about the different power dynamics that are exactly the same parts of a good work of fiction. You have potential enemies, you have the map, you have the main characters, you have supporting characters, you have what you stand to gain, that could be the hidden treasure or the successful sale of a big crop yield at the end of the season. Uh, you have what could go wrong. You, you write it into your role-playing game. So if you're gonna have a role-playing game about running a farm, the weather cycles. And start off simple to, to, to get used to working with the basic elements and get some of those dice. Like, literally like actually go and draw a map buy the dice figure out you know one through three means sunny weather you know and then take it through each stage like each turn could be a week that the characters you know you work it out and you're just doing this for fun, and also this is a great way to work on exactly the same mechanics that go into a good story 
and yet you're you're just getting away from the the pressure that's built up around writing a story and the good thing about this is that when you're done with this kind of activity you could have a new you your your world building the whole time if you have a favorite character you that character you could actually put them in a position where they might actually die they might not win this time it's it all has to do with the roll of the dice and if you play the game through a little bit yeah you do want that that hero that main character the beloved uh, central character to win but this is a role playing game they are their lives are at stake they might have a drought there might be a dust storm prices of seeds may go up, you name it. The, the stakes are real and they're in trouble and they better make some good decisions fast to save that farm. And you have your group or your character start out, they have an objective, they work their way through the maze or through the map and it's the roll of the dice then you're not trying to write a story, the story writes itself. So if you have writer's block and you have one of these games, try letting the story write itself. Go ahead and play it through. The character may die, the character may never find the treasure, but it will create a narrative. Writer's block or no writer's block. A lot of times, writer's block can develop because the writer is not giving themselves enough oxygen. I'm not talking about literally not giving yourself enough oxygen. I don't know the actual science behind it, but the way I see it is your brain... Now, I know that it's probably a lot a lot different the way I'm describing it, but I can get my point across by describing it this way. Writing, your, when, for some modes of writing, the very creative, when you're generating new material during a writing mode, your brain is using a lot of oxygen, a lot more than normal. You can feel it. When you're being highly creative, you can feel your brain working at max capacity, whatever it's actually using up, I can actually feel it. It's like it's a high octane use. The, the, all the little motors in there are, are you start to use up whatever they need. Now it is important to create habits, a discipline, and a schedule. Those are all great tools for writing, but don't smother your brain activity. Give your brain enough oxygen. If you're having writer's block, try a different schedule. One schedule that can actually work wonders is limit yourself to writing one paragraph at a time and then doing that many, many times throughout the day. Sometimes instead of sitting down for, sometimes, sometimes my schedule will be all throughout the day. I'll just, I'll write for maybe two minutes, two to five minutes each time. And I always do it before doing other things. I do it before doing the dishes. I do it before getting ready for work. I, I do it before calling so-and-so on the phone. So throughout the day. It keeps a discipline because before I'm going to do something, especially something I want to do, like uh, before I eat lunch, I tell myself, okay, you can do that, but first you need to, sometimes I'll say you need to write a paragraph, sometimes I'll say you need to write a couple of sentences. And so this looks very different. This kind of writing schedule looks very different. This gives me plenty of room. I hardly feel like I'm writing at all. And I love to write, but it gives me plenty of room to step away from the work. A lot of the times 
when you step away from the work, if you go and you do some yard work for a while, it can do miracles for the writing process. Um, uh, there, there are a lot of writers will go and walk on the beach, they go jogging, they, they do very physical activities between writing, between writing sessions, and the reason for this is it gives their brain the break it needs. And this is actually when a lot of the best creative work can happen, when you step away from it, and when, you're, when you do that other mode of activity, it helps your brain a lot. Now, there are different kinds of exercise, like jogging. You can jog. People go on marathons. They'll constantly jog. They can do it for hours. But then there's weight training where you don't want to do it. They do it in a set. So they'll do like 30 reps in a set. And then they'll give their muscles a break because it's a different kind of exercise. It's where you're trying to build muscle. You're not trying to build muscle like when you go jogging or walking. And it's the same with the... I'm not talking about all writing. I'm just talking about the highly creative writing, the writing when you're creating new material. That's equivalent to lifting weights. It uses up the reason people limit their weightlifting to 30 reps is because it uses up all that all the stored chemical energy in the muscles it uses it up and there's no point in doing it more because then you need to give a chance to let your blood resupply the muscles with the oxygen and and the chemicals it needs to 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 flex those muscle cells again very similar Examine the type of writing that you're trying to do. If if you're doing a draft where you're where you're just uh, proofreading, you do that for days. You could you could make a whole career off of that. You could go and do that every day at work. But if you're writing new fiction, make sure you give your brain a chance to breathe. Don't suffocate it. It happens a lot. There's a myth around writing. I know you know, this idea that Jack Kerouac wrote on the road in one night. There's this kind of like, oh, you know, this thing to aspire before. I think there's a mistake in looking at writing that way. And also, you know, don't forget you're doing this for fun. If you're not having fun, do it. Forget it. You know, go do something else. Do something that will make you more money. It, if you're not doing you need to give yourself a schedule that includes that that helps you to have fun while you're doing it and you can pay it to your brain tells you what it needs if you're if you're just sitting there and there are times where I can't I don't want to stop writing and I feel the strain and I'm tired when I'm done and sometimes I'll write that way just because I, I don't want to stop, but it's still using up, it's depriving my brain of whatever, you know, it, at some point I just have to take a rest. And after I rest a little bit, it runs a lot more, uh, uh, much more smoothly, because then I have all that oxygen and nutrients and energy to, to, to run at full capacity again. Before I make my last suggestion about what you can do instead of creative writing that still involves writing, I ask you, please, if you have your own ideas, please leave a comment for other writers. There are a lot of things you can do that make you a better writer, and this will be a great time to do those things. You can start learning a new vocabulary word each day. You can get one of those spelling apps on your phone to become a better speller. You can read a book on grammar. You can take an online course on grammar. You can enroll in a writing class. You can take a typing class. You can... These are things 
that you can do anytime, writer's block or no writer's block, and they will be the skills you learn, the, the practice that you, when you practice these things, it makes you faster, it makes the whole writing process easier and goes, uh, it makes the writing process go more smoothly from then on out. It's an investment in your future as a writer. The easier you can make writing on the technical side, the faster your creativity will flow, the more energy you can bring into your writing, it, the funner it becomes. And it's a matter of practice, you know, it's the thing about practice is it just takes a lot of practice and then you just gradually develop the skills. Practicing anything is not necessarily fun, but it makes future activity much funner. Thanks for watching. Encourage me to make more. Every time you leave a comment or subscribe, hit the little bell. I find myself making more of these tutorials, feeling like I like I'm actually communicating with people. I have a great time knowing I am in contact with other creative minds out there. To me, it's like this this is this is the future. Human creativity, ah, it is just it's one of those resources that's so enjoyable to watch what it does for people and where it will take us. So this is my chance to talk about my own writing. You, If you want to see my work, go to solomation.com. I just came out with a book. It's about rogue AI in a lifelike simulated universe. I had a great time writing it. Please check it out. As always, I hope your writing is rewarding, is fulfilling, and you have a great time doing it, and you can get your, your work out there for people. Hope your writing goes well. Have a great day.